So one of the things I wanted to talk to you earlier about is, is that it, your book, uh, many books that I've read, you've read, uh, many of the books in as far as uh, talking about politics and how it affects history and uh, the takeover of America, the takeover and the control of politics in our uh, everyday minutia. You had said that this is, your book is like, yeah, it's 10 years. And we had spoken earlier about, I had disagreed with you about that. I think it's happening today. And, and yet we had, and then we went into this part about the elections and what's going on. Um, again, I gotta re-ask the question. These things are already happening though. When, when we talk about the elections, I mean, people are already in the bag for Hillary in the bag for Jeb Bush, and the rest of the candidates are just being left twisted in the wind. I mean, what's going on here? We're already there again, aren't we? I got a question for you real quick uh, before Chris gets into his next one. Um, what, okay, they just changed the uh, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff from General Dempsey to a uh, Marine, uh, 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 Marine General. But he's only the second Marine General to hold that post. Um, um, I know for a fact uh, from having gone through basic training in the, in the Marine Corps, um, uh, the oath is the is the most important thing um, to 99% of our warriors that J. Helm exercises are actually being run by foreign military officers in the, under, under the instruction of the UN because Barack Obama doesn't trust any of the United States officers and um, I was just, what, what, what's your take on, um, on, on a Marine General who obeys the oath, his oath of office and um, becoming the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, do you think there's any hope that, uh, that, the, that the United States military will take uh, the, the, the steps that, um, that are written out in the UCMJ when the commander-in-chief is, uh, is guilty of dereliction of duty on so many counts that um, they can't arrest him and, and, and basically order the Congress to, to Basically, d depose him and put him through the impeachment process and all uh, and, and censure him.
Somewhat like, somewhat like just LBJ. Yeah, we don't need, we like don't LBJ. need Uncle Joe, a drunk Uncle <laughs> Joe. I yeah. mean, he'll be. I, I mean, who actually wrote the Patriot well, Act? Well, they'll they'll give Uncle Joe a pass as he hangs over his interns and and gropes. Oh, and oh, oh yeah. They'll give him a pass, but anyway, he'll be known so, as the groper. I want to move on. I want to move on to a different thing. Montefero Press. This is your company that you started, isn't it, Mike? All right. Tell us about how this got started. Why you got it started? What and yeah, the history of it. So I, um, you know, after I finished the second draft of Full Asylum, I felt it was, you know, far enough along that it was time to start looking for a publisher. And uh, I, I, you know, I never had to look for a publisher before my first book. So I read books about how to get published. And what they said was that the reason that so many authors uh, have so much trouble, get so many rejections, is they don't do their homework. They don't look for a publisher who's a good match for their book. Oh. So I said, okay, so what publisher out there would be a good match for a conservative slash libertarian dystopian comic? <laughs> Has a virgin book he's like been working on for uh, ages, working and, on uh, ages, and he's a conservative. So, uh, so when, he, <laughs> when he finish, when he finish, when, when he gets the, you know into, into finishing, you're going to get back in contact with him because it's going to be it's going to be it's going to be somewhat you know right along the lines of what you what, what <laughs> it you're is. It's about the end is. of the world, basically. But yeah, and yeah. I read I read I read some a couple of chapters of it of it a long it's time a ago. Conservative view and, of the end and, of the world. And, and you know, it touches on a little personal stuff with him, and he's gonna change like the names to protect the innocent, uh, or protect <laughs> the guilty. <laughs> yeah, you know, protect the guilty. But um, but in any event, you know, I figured I'd plug that because. So that's that's great, oh, Mike. That you uh, see, this is the thing. Fantastic. You You're just your started friend. your own company. Now this launches us into another part of the interview. What problems did you encounter? in trying to start your own publishing company. I'm talking regulations, uh, yada yada, you know what I'm talking about, Mike. What problems did, did you run into?
Anytime, my friend. Anytime. Anytime. Ladies and gentlemen, Mike Eisenberg, author of the book, Full Asylum. Michael, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show. Mike, you and I have run into uh, each other oh, yeah. so many times uh, uh, through the Tea Party and the Liberty Movement. I can't wait to see you again. Uh, we can talk off the mic uh, when we meet each other. Uh, Wayne, you got one I more thing have, to say? I just have one more, quote, one, one, one more little uh, ditty for, for information. Um, as, as a publisher, sir, um, most of the publishers that I've ever run into, I was almost published by the Smithsonian Institution with a poem I wrote. Um, but but they but they wanted they they wanted thirty five dollars for the hard copy and I'm like I'm not spe I'm not spending that it's not that important to me at the time so um, you know now I'm gonna make a book of my own poetry and and and, and put it out there I'll publish it one day you know depending on who I can find for a publisher like you said. Um, Okay, that would be great, but that would be great. But um, the, in, in my, my 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 point was that what was that? You don't need any employees, all right? Uh, like you don't have to hire a bunch of writers, okay? Because it's your books and your uh, and the people that are the, you're publishing you're publishing the books for, they're not your employees. They are actually seeking your seeking to pay you to 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 basically. Publish a book for him. yeah. But your this is the problem. He wasn't able to run into people like that. He had and now he's the entrepreneur. Own. He's right, the entrepreneur, right, exactly. and people are going to pay you for the opportunity to have their book put in print. All right. So they aren't employees. They are themselves entrepreneurs with their own books. With so their own they stuff. Can't, right, right. They can't regulate you, and in turn, you're not going to be able to regulate what they have to say. <coughs> Oh, but don't worry, Mike. As we all know, in this leftist government, they'll find a way. Mike, I want to thank you so much. My good man, Mike Eisenberg. Uh, you and I run into each other. Hey, May 21st, we've got the gun rights thing coming up at the, uh, the Whistler Tea Party. You, got, you know about that. And uh, it was great seeing you in Boston. And uh, I can't wait till the next time you and I rub shoulders together again. Mike, Mike, thank you so much for being on the show. Thanks, man. Hey, hey, give your site, give your information, uh, contact information. Go ahead. I'll put this out on the meat and potatoes. I've already done it anyway, so I'll put it on the meat and potatoes pages. And uh, Mike Eisenberg, I'll prompt it on my Facebook page. Yeah, too. We, I we, have 4,500 yeah, friends on yeah, mine. You, you are gonna get covered here, man. Yeah, yeah, we'll don't worry about it. Covered. All right, Mike. Thank you so much for calling into the show tonight. You're welcome. Thank All right. You. Thank good you, night. Sir. God bless have you, my night. friend.